Welcome to the beginning stages of our new project house for this season. It's a 16,000 square foot monster. I mean, it is a really big home. Now we've got nine bathrooms inside this house, which means a lot of plumbing. And even though it's a big home, the rules that we use here are gonna to apply to your home as well. We're working on the most important stage right now. It's called the plumbing rough end. The reason it's important is we're about to pour 350 yards of concrete on top of this, and we're gonna be locked down as soon as we do. It all starts with a set of plans and a trencher. The plumber digs trenches where the sanitary drainage and water lines will run. They mark the trench locations on the foundation form boards and use those as guidelines for digging the trenches. As they dig the trenches, the plumbers check to be sure that the slope for the sanitary drainage lines runs consistently downhill. The trenches have to maintain a downhill slope from the toilets and drains at the farthest part of the house all the way to the street where the house's plumbing connects to the city sewer line. At the street, a backhoe digs down to connect with the city's sewer line, which is 8 to 10 feet below the surface in this case. The sewer line is so deep because every house on the street must be able to drain into it, running downhill. Once the trenches are in, the plumbers put string lines where the walls will go and use these as guidelines to place the pipes in exactly the right place, just inside the walls. The copper pipe that will run underneath the concrete slab is a flexible roll with no joints or seams. Wherever the copper pipe is going to pass through the concrete, it has to be sheathed with a protective layer of plastic or foam. That gives it room to expand and contract with heat and cold. Hot water lines are sheathed in red, cold water lines are blue. Once all the lines are in and the plumbing has passed inspection, the foundation crew fills in the plumbing trenches and recuts the trenches where the concrete beams will go. Then they spread a layer of cushion sand on top to help cushion the pipes buried below and evenly distribute the weight of the concrete. A layer of plastic is put on top of that to act as a moisture barrier, and the plumbing rough-in is done. Now here in our kitchen we have a great example of planning ahead. This is going to be an island with a sink in it. We've got to put our pipes in right now. You don't want to jackhammer that concrete up later. You're going to end up in getting into your post-tension cables or into your rebar if that's the way you poured your foundation. It's going to be hard to make it drain. You've got to plan ahead. Well, it may not look like a lot of plumbing, but this little area right here actually takes care of two bathrooms upstairs, plus a shower and a steam shower here in our cabana room. I'd really like for you to look at this copper manifold here because there's some interesting points. One, all of the joints are up above our foundation floor. We're going to pour concrete for this foundation. We need to get all of the joints up where if they ever leak or we have a problem, we have access to them. If they leak below the concrete foundation, it's going to be next to impossible to find the leak and we're going to tear up a lot of concrete. It's going to be very expensive. All the joints need to be up in the air. You really need to watch how they put those joints together. I have a piece of copper here from a house that actually failed. As you can see, it's got a crack here on the side of it. The reason why is when they cut the pipe, they didn't really clean out all of the burrs and ridges in there. And what happens is when the water flows and it hits that little ridge, it disturbs the water. And that water made the turn, and over the years, it kept eating away at the side of that pipe, and they finally had a failure. Whenever they cut a piece of pipe, they really need to ream out the interior of that and make sure that it's really clean and smooth. One other thing to watch out for is the flux that they use to sweat the joints together. You do not want to use an oil-based flux. You want to use a water-based flux. The oil-based flux can actually build up on the interior and cause water flow problems and will end up with corrosion. The water-based flux, that won't be a problem. Let me show you one thing on the drain pipes over in the kitchen. Well, you notice on our four drains over here in the kitchen wall that we have actually a piece of pipe protruding from each one of them, and we have a cap on the end of that pipe. These are our clean outs. If we ever get a clog inside one of these pipes, the plumber just comes out to the outside of your house, because this is where our wall is, takes the cap off of it, runs a snake in there, and cleans out your drain. They don't have to come inside your house. They don't have to make a mess or tear up anything. They have easy access to each one of these caps. Whether you're building a 16,000 square foot house or a 1,600 square foot house, remember to plan out that plumbing in advance. You get it in the right spot, you're going to save a lot of money over jackhammering that concrete and moving it later. On your copper pipe, make sure the plumber cleans out the interior of that pipe, knocks down any burrs or ridges, and uses a water-based flux instead of an oil-based flux. A lot less corrosion, no leaks in the future.